is this spectral harp. Uh, the way this works is at the left audio input, you can sequence which uh, string is being plucked. When you send a trigger to the gate one, it will pluck whatever string is currently uh, selected at the input here. And then uh, at the right audio input, you can sequence the uh, amplitude. So I'm doing pitch um, and amplitude from no control here. If you want to have uh, amplitude just be basically constant, you can just put a dead cable in like this. If you have no cable, connected and just won't make sound because it's silent at that input. You have control over what section of the spectrum is being plucked by this input. And so we can change the fundamental, which is the lowest uh, string. And as we raise that, you see that the range of the harp, which is displayed at the top, changes. Within that range, uh, there's a parameter for how many octaves are represented. Um, in other words, based on the number of strings that we want, we assign those in blocks to frequency octaves. Right now I'm in the middle, and we can take it up. We can bring it down. And you'll see as we get to the low number of octaves, even though the number of strings is at the maximum, visually we see the number of strings reduced down here, and that's simply because the frequency spectrum is essentially less dense in the lower portion of it. So there aren't as many frequency bands that will uh, split into actual musical octaves. So then we can control also density of strings or how many there are. acts sort of like a quantizer on the input signal here. It is possible to set it up so that each string is a note in a major scale. But the design is such that it's not, it's not intended to be like super straightforward to do that. The idea here is more freeform striking of the spectrum to create interesting sounds. This parameter is the spacing of the bands. So when it's all the way down, it says um, logarithmic spacing which gives you musical spacing. You have to have it on logarithmic spacing to be able to uh, even get through normal, well-tempered intervals. And as you turn it this way, it goes to linear spacing, which tends to push things up towards the high end of the range. Since we're sending a trigger, we have this decay, and we can control how long strings in the harp uh, ring out. And decay will affect strings that are already ringing out. So when you have something like this and you bring this down, everything goes back to short, even if you have
Then we have spread, which will activate strings on either side of the strings that are being plucked. And you can see over here in the spectrum, those peaks start to spread out. This can get pretty extreme. Then we also have brightness, which adds in harmonic overtones to plucked strings. So you go from sine waves to saw waves, essentially. And when you apply spread to that, it is also spreading uh, the overtones. So by combining all of these, decay and spread and brightness, you can wind up in a pretty full spectrum noise situation. And then we have a bit crush effect here. And this row is uh, reverb controls, so we have a diffuser which will give us a stereo image, which is pretty nice. And then we also have a reverb amount. And then reverb length. And then this is uh, tone, it's a, it's a low pass filter on the reverb. So now, if we use gate in two, then the length of the gate becomes important. For as long as the gate is active, the string that's being selected here will be at full amplitude. So if we turn up time here, you get a better sense of that. And here this is very short versus long. And you can't apply decay to that, but the decay won't start until the gate ends. So here's a fun little patch that uses some audio rate sequencing and triggering, striking of the strings. So I have a cycling envelope on the no coast that is providing the string, selecting the string to strike. And then this triangle wave from the oscillator is setting the amplitude. And then we'll start by using the square wave from the same oscillator um, in the gate input. And you can get sort of surprising variation out of changing the frequency of the oscillator and the frequency of the 
Slow pun right here. And you get kind of a different effect using this clock signal for the gate, which is being clocked by the end of clock from the slope. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you.